You know, I would argue right now that we are in the worst format of all time. Now, I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively since 2008, so for 14 years. I've been through a lot of Tier 0 formats in 14 years, but man, even though this isn't a Tier 0 format, I'd say that this is the worst format of all time. So let's dive on into it, shall we? Smash the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button so that we can reach our goal of 1,000 subscribers. I really am grateful for all of the support. We're at 948 subs. I, I never thought I would get this far. So smash it so that we can get there and, and just continue this ride of life. So all that out of the way, let's talk about this terrible ass Yu-Gi-Oh format. Now, I know what a lot of people are going to say. Avery, you've been through tier zero formats. You've been through Frog FTK in 2010. I played a little bit when Virtual World was tier one with True King of All Calamities and shit like that. But I would make the argument that this is the worst format of all time because of what we have access to. And obviously I'm talking about Mystic fucking Mine. We have never had a card in Yu-Gi-Oh that literally just says you can't play the game. And I get the argument, but I'm also just very much against it that people make for Mystic Mine where, you know, if a combo player pops off, right? People say that Mystic Mine is healthy because it punishes the combo player for extending and making a board full of negates. At the same time, Yu-Gi-Oh! has been a break my board game for several years at this point. So if you don't like that Yu-Gi-Oh! has gone in that direction, like, I'm sorry, but that's how Yu-Gi-Oh! is. Having Mystic Mine in the game doesn't just solve everything. And that's okay if you think that Yu-Gi-Oh! has an Evolva. That's totally fine. I'm not saying that you're a bad player or anything for it. It's just that a card like Mystic Mind does not deserve to exist. You know, it's different with a tier zero format. Let's use Necroz, for example, in 2015. Necroz became tier zero. So it was either you played Necroz or you played something to beat Necroz. You built your deck to beat Necroz. And in a tier zero deck type of format, you know, it would be the, the spicy plays or the spicy techs that would get you the W when playing Necroz. And you would build your deck specifically to beat Necroz. So, you know, you could play something that's rogue with a lot of cards to stop ritual summoning. You make your side deck to beat Necroz, things like that. We've never seen a card like Mystic Mind that is essentially almost a tier zero card where, yeah, you have a lot of back row hate in today's meta, but how many copies of back row hate cards can you put in your main deck without just making your deck a brick? How many can you side deck while at the same time having a 15 card bucket limit for your side being able to not only side deck, let's say, I would say like five cards minimum in your side deck for back row hate, while having another 10 cards to beat all of the other matchups you have problems with. So we're talking 10 cards in your side to beat Sprite, Tear, Eldritch, Flunder, Rika Sun Avalon, Heroes, you know, like the list goes on and on. Obviously some, obviously some decks are more potent and are more represented than other decks but the fact remains that you can only prepare for so many matchups and those five cards that you're putting in your side for one fucking card should not have to be the case in Yu-Gi-Oh! Like the last time people really committed like this was when Kaiser Coliseum was around several years ago. Now, for those of you who maybe didn't play when Kaiser Coliseum was a card, it's a continuous spell card that essentially says that both players can only control the same number of monsters. But at the time, the way that it was ruled was that if like, let's say I activate Kaiser Coliseum and I end my turn and I don't have any monsters, you could summon as many monsters as you want. But like, let's say for example, Kaiser Coliseum was around today and I'm playing Eldritch and I set four and activate Kaiser Coliseum, and when you draw for turn, I activate Scarlet Sanguine and bring out a Golden Lord, you can now only have up to one monster on the field unless you pop the Kaiser Coliseum. And God forbid you try and summon a monster to like get over my Golden Lord and I activate Skill Drain. Now you have no effects and I'm sitting on a 2800 defense wall and you're locked into one monster. How idiotic is that shit? I'm so glad that Kaiser Coliseum needs to, is, is just banned. Now it also had like a lot of ruling issues because like what if I pop two monsters on my side and one on your side? And like that all happens at the same time. What happens to the monster count? And it was, it was a big old ruling nightmare and it didn't have like any sort of problem solving card text. So it was like, it, it was, it just needed to go. So besides all the PSCT stuff, the fact that you have a card and I know cause I've played Mystic Mind Burn at Locals. I came in 27th place at Boca Raton with Branded Eldritch, 60 cards, playing basically 10 Mystic Minds with Set Rotation, Metaverse, Three Demise, The Land, Terraforming, you name it. You know, it's just a draw, pass, draw, pass. And like, 
I can't use monster effects anywhere. Not the deck, not my backyard, not the graveyard, like nothing. And then you're just expected to draw into an out. And it's like, what if I don't have any room in my main deck for now? Am I going to play a 45 card main deck where 40 cards in my deck is gas? And then I've got five bricks that are just back row hate. What if I play against a deck that doesn't like set any back row? Like what if I play against, I don't know, Rika and like, okay, I can hit their field spell, but like, what if they have the negate? It, it's, I see the argument from both sides, but I lean so much more towards the fact that Mystic Mind is just terrible. And I have never, in all of my years of playing competitive Yu-Gi-Oh, I have never not gone to a regional because of the format. There were some regionals in the past when I first started working uh, my full-time job because I was working Wednesday through Sunday um, from the, the full-time job that I'm now still on medically from almost a fucking year out, which I think is idiotic. Um, and I missed a lot of regionals because I wasn't able to get time off, things like that. But other than that, I've never just skipped out on a regional because of the format. And, you know, today was the Bainbridge regional in Georgia. And I didn't go because I'm tired of this fucking format. I'm tired of Mystic Mind. You know, things may not necessarily get better depending on what happens on this ban list. Because keep in mind, we've got Darkwing Blast in October. That's going to have the Bystead stuff, which are amazing as fuck. Uh, then I think that that set also has the Kashatri stuff, which is like the Shangri-La shit and whatever, which is getting even more support in Photon Hypernova, which we get in 2023. We have Magnificent Mavens in November, which will make tier elements. I'm going to throw that out there as my hot take, a tier zero deck, you know, and to top it off, they keep Mystic Mind in the meta. Like, man, I don't want to deal with that shit. And I don't think anybody does at this point. I would rather be in a tier zero format with an FTK in the format, like frog FT fucking K, because at least then with an FTK, you know the choke points. You don't have to worry about going against tier elements. Oh, but then they also play Mystic Mind or going against Sky Striker. And oh, they play Mystic Mind. And it's like, they're just going to sit on the Hayate and beat your face in and just get a Shizuku or a Kagari search like every couple turns. It's so toxic. It's so just bad for the game. And I, again, I understand that in the grand scheme of things, Mystic Mind is supposed to give you those extra couple turns to draw into like things that you could use. At the same time though, why should I lose the game off of one card when I fair and square had you beat? I won the dice roll. Okay, luck involved. I opened up a five card hand that just was all gas. You know, obviously the RNG in that regard was in my favor because I mean, if 95% of your deck is all gas and the other 5% is hand traps that are bricks and I opened up the 95%, like I'm going to have a good chance of going first and making a big board that you can't break if you don't do like Dark Ruler, Evenly Lightning Storm, things like that. And to hit me with the Mystic Mind like that, it just makes you feel bad. Like it doesn't make you feel like you're improving as a player because you get dunked on, you get shit on <laughs> by one card that you just happen to not have the out for. Whether it's because they Dark Ruler you first and then Mystic Mind or I don't know, they fucking Sphere Moded or Lava Golem or Negates and then play Mystic Mind. Like how is that supposed to be fair? That's what I don't understand. And again, like... I get it. Like, we've had more broken things in the past, arguably, with, like, True King of All Calamities, where you just couldn't activate any effects. Rongo Bongo locking you out of the game. But, see, at least with those cards being monsters, at least you had things like Lava Golem, Kaijus. You had instant out to these things that, when in a vacuum with those particular examples, can't be negated. You know, I play Feather Duster, Twin Twister, Lightning Storm, what have you. You can negate those, whether it's a monster effect, you know, Judgment, Curse, Seal, the Forbidden Spell, whatever. If I Kaiju your Rongo Bongo or I Kaiju your True King of All Calamities, you can't negate an inherent game action. Like, that's not negatable. That's not interactable with. Like, I remember years ago, I would Lava Golem somebody and this is how far we're going back because bottomless trap hole is still being played. And they go bottomless. Okay, I get my monsters back. I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? I attributed your monsters. You're going to bottomless and get rid of it, but your monsters are gone. Looking back on it, they were just probably trying to fucking cheat me thinking I'm an idiot, but fuck them. I still won anyway. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's not negatable. It's not interactable. It's not interactable, if I could speak today, until after the fact. Whereas I try and pop your missing money, you just say, <laughs> negate, <laughs> hand trap, <laughs> solemn. <laughs> and it's like, is this really what we're doing? And on top of that too, you know, at least with something like True King of All Calamities, 
you know, that's a card in your extra deck that you have to get the proper monsters on the field for. Whereas a field spell like Mystic Mind, you have so many fucking ways to get to. Planet Pathfinder, Demise of the Land, Set Rotation, Terraforming, Metaverse. Uh, that's five right there. Like, <laughs> that's a lot. And if Konami wants to put out more field spell searchers, they got to keep mind. Oh, wait, Mystic Mind's a thing. That's another three copies of a way to get to Mystic Mind. And it's it's just terrible, man. I mean, I'm hardly playtesting. I'm fucking around with shit like Crystal Beast. Conclave Control. Like, never thought I'd say that. <laughs> but, guys, please, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there just something I'm missing? Because, I mean, okay. I, I've heard people tell me, Avery, go play Telephone FTK. I don't feel like losing to fucking Imperm. Or, like, Ghost Ogre on my Cannon Soldier or something. Because with my luck, the opponent's always going to have a fucking hand trap. Guys, please, thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next video.